All right, we're gonna be hooking up my remote antenna switch. I've got it mounted up there. And this is my cable that I'm gonna be sending down uh, my connections for my switch box. So I'm gonna put a, a half inch hole on the side here. And I'm gonna put a liquid tight connector on the side here, run it out, run it up into the box. So and I'm just going to make sure these connections in here are still tight and relocate a couple of these up to the switch box. Okay, so I got the connector in and I got the wire through the Lico-Tite connector and you always want to have your wires on outside penetrations to at least have a loop down so the water can't travel back up into the connector and sit on that seal. Um, I got the spare wire coiled up here. I have this stapled all along here up to this point, up through the connector here, and I have it on, hooked up to the, through the strain relief, and I'm going to double up on my ground for redundancy, and the rest will be single conductor. Okay, so I've got my cables hooked up, I'm still going to make a chart on my post-it note, and what we got here is we got a redundant one channel and the rest are all single conductor and a redundant ground. So that's going to be our connection to the shack. Alright, so I got this end all wired up um, uh, control wise, so now I'm just going to put my home brew insulated shielded cover on here. Let's see how she gets. Excellent. So now I'm just going to put the screws in there and seal that up. And now I'm going to reroute my coaxes up to the switch. And I'm going to have one input coming down and going into the one of these channels I have here. I have three coaxes in here. So I'm going to, I'm going to free, end up freeing up one of these coaxes. One of these coaxes actually goes up to my 2 meter 440. And I want to be able to hook my Antron back in for 10 meters. And I have the G5RV up there. I also have my 0.5 antenna way up there on the hill, so it'd be nice to be able to um, free up one of these coaxes for future use. Uh, if I want to put a dedicated 440 or um, a 2 meter and uh, 2 meter beam up or something, I can have uh, two VHF UHF and one HF channel that has multiple hookups. So I have all my, my coaxes that come out from various points of the yard and the shed and I have them all coming up into um, on the back side of this wall stapled up against the shed going up to the switch box. And like I said all the wires want to come down you don't want them you know looping in to the loop uh, into the box unless you have a nice service loop if you have them straight going in at an angle you could potentially get some water travel into the box um, so straight down is perfectly fine so now I get to um, make one of the uh, I already have one of these capped off now it's gonna be my future spare and uh, now I have to make a jumper from here to the input of the um, the switch box and we should be all set out here I can fasten everything up and button the boxes back up and put the remote switch head and uh, wire that up. Alright, so we're 100% done out here now. Now I've got my jumper installed, everything all stapled up, um, everything's hooked up, so we're going to head back into the shack and uh, get the other half done. Uh, I had to spend most of my morning trying to cut back all these vines that have been attacking the shed. That's what all this um, vine debris is on the back of the the shed it's actually uh, grown on the ground about six feet back here and it started taking over the back side of the shed so I cut it back about about six feet to get it uh, to this point uh, so I had to wait till the fall to do this so all the leaves come off I made mean, it much easier than trying to get back here with all the bees and everything else so um, in uh, one respect I'm actually glad that I decided to put the switch in here because this needed to be serviced anyway. So I have the switch box hooked up according to my legend I have here 
Uh, it's all wired up. Like I said, I have two redundant ground wires and two redundant channel one wires, just in case something may happen. Um, I'm gonna flip it around here. I'm gonna turn the radio up. I got it on 10 meters. It's quiet right now because uh, when you have the switch off, all antennas are grounded. Remember how we set it up that way on the previous video. Now if I turn this on on antenna one, it should go to my zero five, and the signal should rise. Oh, definitely. Now I want to go to my G five RV. It's going to be quiet because it's not tuned, but it doesn't work well on ten anyway. And now I'm going to go to my Antron ninety nine. A lot more noise. Now it's grounded. So that's great. So now I have my switch over here. I have those two ports, uh, those two other cables. Uh, that one's future use now. It used to be uh, another antenna. Now I just keep this on one. If I want to ground the station, I just put this in the center position and shut that other switch off. And I'm totally isolated from the shack uh, by switches, not by disconnection, but uh, it's better than nothing, I guess. So, uh, that's it.